What's up guys, Fabio here once again, and I'm back with uh, my next review in Brandon Lee, um, which is the uh, the buddy cop martial arts action film, Showdown in Little Tokyo. This is my VHS copy that I just showed in my last VHS update. I do have the movie on DVD, but it's in a uh, double feature with Bloodsport. Um, and I'd rather show the VHS off anyway. I like how it has a martial arts sticker on there, and I also do have the Japanese laser disc which I'll talk about in my upcoming laser disc video and I actually just ordered yesterday the American laser disc um, just want to have it because you know I'm just gonna go ahead and say it you know excuse my language but this movie's fucking awesome um, it's a extremely underrated 90s martial arts action buddy cop classic I mean you can't go wrong with Showdown Little Tokyo it's my favorite buddy cop film, you know, I think it's better than Lethal Weapon and, you know, um, Tango and Cash, you know, those kind of movies. Because the reason why I think it's better is because not only can Brandon Lee and Dolph Lundgren shoot guns, but they can kick ass too, you know, so it's, it's balanced. It's more balanced to me. But, I mean, I absolutely love this movie um, and I'll get into all the details about it and why I love it so much in the course of this review. Um... Uh, Zero Cool 1389, John just did a uh, discussion video with Rambo Rap for Life, a.k.a. Matt, and Wild Man Beyond, which I will put the link down below for that. And also, OCP Communications, a.k.a. Mike, did a fan trailer a long time ago for Double Dragon, which I also put the link down below. Um, and I know Matt said it in the discussion video that if you think about it, this is this could have been the real Double Dragon movie. Now, I like Double Dragon because I grew up with it, you know, and I really like Mark Dacascos. But he's right because what's the story of Double Dragon? Two brothers fighting against a gang. You know, this could have easily worked as a Double Dragon film, you know. A R-rated, you know, Double Dragon film, which would have been awesome. But, uh, you know, that's enough for the opening. You know, I think I've talked long enough, but, you know, let's get into the actual review. Now, I don't really need to go into the story because, you know, this movie is definitely, to me at least, a standout of the martial arts buddy cop genre, the action genre of the 90s. You know, Dolph Lundgren is this cop. One sec. Whatever. Anyway, I know you just saw a cut because the phone rang and I said, hold on. But anyway, um, you know, Dolph Lundgren is this cop who grew up in Japan um, his parents were killed by Kerry Tsugawa, who's, you know, you find out he's now the head of the Yakuza, the Yakuza clan in, in L.A. So he wants to get revenge, and his partner's Brandon Lee, who's a half-Japanese cop, you know, but he's like a valley dude, you know, he's like into the mall and then that kind of stuff, which I thought was great, because that's kind of the opposite of what Brandon Lee's personality was like in real life. So they team up to fight the Yakuza. The plot's simple, you know. I know nowadays for action films you gotta have this elaborate plot and all these twists and turns and all this other kind of shit. But you don't need it. I mean, look at Showdown Little Tokyo. The plot is simple. The execution is great. You got great martial arts sequences. You got great shootouts. Um, you know, the only thing that's missing is a car chase, which they cut out of the movie, which I'll get into. But, I mean, now my fucking cell phone's going off. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a text that can wait. Um, you know, it's just a kick-ass action classic. And, you know, this was the era, you know, the, the late 80s, the early 90s, the martial arts movies had really come back. You know, in the 70s, you had Bruce Lee, you know, and then Bruce Lee died. And for a couple of years, you had some. You had, you know, Jim Kelly from Enter the Dragon was in Black Belt Jones and some other martial arts films. You know, Chuck Norris did... A, the first couple movies that Chuck Norris did were really kind of martial arts films. Uh, a Force of One, The Octagon, um, uh, Eye for an Eye, I guess you could consider, you know, to be pretty much a you know, martial arts film. Um, you know, and then in the, 80, in the early 80s, it kind of died off because all of a sudden Rambo came out and, you know, it, wanted, it was... There was a new genre, the one-man army film. 
And then, you know, you had some, you know, martial arts films in the 80s that were popular. You know, you had No Retreat, No Surrender with Van Damme. You know, Jackie Chan tried to break, you know, some ground here in America, and he didn't, but, you know, that's okay. At that time, he didn't, but he came back. Then, you know, Van Damme did Bloodsport and Kickboxer and uh, Lionheart, you know, in the 90s, Lionheart, early 90s. And then Steven Seagal came around, and then all of a sudden, the martial arts were popular again. You know, then you had Ninja Turtles, Three Ninjas, you know, Power Rangers, you know, Showdown Little Tokyo, you know, Walker, Texas Ranger had come on around this time, Renegade with Lorenzo Lamas, Highlander has some martial arts in it, the TV show at least. So all of a sudden, the martial arts made a comeback, which was great. And, you know, what better way to display the martial arts with two guys who are obviously talented in that field. Dolph Lundgren's a third-degree black belt in Kyokushin Kai. And, come on, Brandon Lee's Bruce's son, you know, and which is great. So, I mean, this movie, I think, is a great display of martial arts. And you have a lot of other guys in the movie, you know, who are martial artists. You know, Kerry Tagawa, the, the bad guy, is a martial artist. You know, Al Leong is in it, you know, uh, the guy, you know, everybody knows him, you know, the Asian guy that's in every action film, that's what he's referred to as, he's a stunt guy. Uh, Philip Ree from Best of the Best, his brother, Simon, who played uh, Dehan in Best of the Best 1 and 2, he plays, he's in Showdown Little Tokyo, he's the guy that has to cut his finger off, he's a martial artist. You know, Toshihiro Obata, who is the guy, the bald-headed guy from Ninja Turtles. And he was in Black Rain, um, China O'Brien 2, he was on an episode of Walker, he was in The Shadow, Demolition Man, uh, Red Sun Rising with Don the Dragon Wilson. He's a martial artist, you know, he's a great martial artist. He has like 10 black belts, you know, and his uh, one of his ancestors was a samurai general. I mean, come on, that's definitely credibility right there. You know, so this movie couldn't have come in a better time. And the title is just fucking cool. Showdown in Little Tokyo. So you know already there's going to be some martial arts. There's going to be action. You can't go wrong with this movie, you know. It's so freaking underrated. I mean, I don't understand why it's so underrated. But it's a classic. I mean, Dolph Lundgren. Like, I know on the front cover he's got, like, the bullets on him. But he really doesn't use guns in the movie. He only He's got his Desert Eagle and then he uses that M16 at the end. But that's about it, you know. But, I mean, it's just, I love this movie. My only gripe about the movie, the only problem I have with it, is that I did not grow up with it. I didn't see this movie until I was a freshman in high school. Because, um, we have a mom and pop video store here in town. But you have to be 18 to get a membership. And I wasn't 18 at the time, obviously. And I always bug my dad. I'm like, Dad, can we go and get a membership? Dad, can we go and get a membership? And we never went, you know, he never, you know, took me there, you know, which sucks. But now I have a membership, you know, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, um, so we had Blockbuster Online. And I remember um, adding the movie, but for some reason it had a very long wait to it. Um, you know, I guess it was a popular, you know, people wanted to see it. So I remember waiting and waiting and waiting for it. And then finally one day it came in the mail. And I had seen a trailer, you know, for the movie before. Because this is right around the time YouTube came out. And, you know, that kind of thing. So I remember seeing the trailer for it. And I really wanted to see this movie because of Brandon Lee. And I had, at that time I had gotten into Brandon Lee more. I remember... Um, I think I was in like 7th or 8th grade and I finally saw Rapid Fire and The Crow. And I wanted to see more and I know that he didn't do much, you know, obviously. Um, and Legacy of Rage I saw later down the road because I, you know, it, you know I wasn't really um, wanted to see that one as bad as this one. But I wanted to see it because Brandon Lee, obviously, and Dolph Lundgren. And I heard a lot of good things about the movie, so I had really wanted to see it. And I remember it came in the mail, and I watched the movie probably like three or four times before I sent it back. Because I was just so fucking impressed with it. With the action sequences, and just how awesome the movie is, that I didn't want to take it back to the video, you know, mail it, you know, mail it back in. 
And I remember that summer, the summer after ninth grade, we went to Florida for a vacation. And we were uh, we stayed with my cousins because they used to live in Florida. They don't they moved back up here now. Well, Maryland, you know, they live they moved back up to Maryland now. But we were walking around Walmart one day. I think we were getting like stuff for dinner. Like my dad was gonna make dinner. But anyway, I remember walking around and we walked past the DVDs and I saw they had the double feature of Bloodsport and Showdown in Little Tokyo for like it was like ten bucks or something. And I had money, you know, so I'm like, cool. So I bought that, and, you know, I remember we went back to my my uncle, no, it's not my uncle, my cousin's house, um, and we watched Bloodsport, you know, you know, we watched Bloodsport, which was cool. Because um, my, yeah, my cousin, he, uh, he, they lived in Florida because he worked for the railroad, um, and he had to go down there, they moved him down there for his job, so they paid for the house and everything, which was cool. It was a nice house and stuff, but they moved back up here. They got he got transferred back up here, which is great, you know, because they're closer. And I remember he had to work at night, and his wife, my other cousin, she wasn't there. I think she was up here or something. But anyway, um, you know, he went to work, and we watched Bloodsport, you know, which is a martial art, another martial arts classic. And then we didn't watch Channel Little Tokyo. I remember watching that on the ride home because we drove down. You know, it's like a 16-hour drive, you know. So I remember watching it on the way home because I brought a bunch. Because we have, in our van, we have a DVD player. So I brought a bunch of DVDs, and I remember um, watching Shonen Little Tokyo. And I think also that summer, we also, there that, that time we were there, we also went to, they had a mall near their house, and we went there, and I found Rapid Fire there for like 10 bucks used. And uh, Death Wish 3 at the same time. So I got, you know, basically my favorite and my second favorite Brandon Lee movie, you know, at uh, the same time, which was cool. Um, this being my second favorite. Rapid Fire has always been my favorite. Cause, and everybody says The Crow is their favorite, so that's why I don't, you know, say that. But anyway, you know, but yeah, I mean, just from the get-go, I was just impressed with the movie. I mean, it's got a great pace to it. It's got great action sequences, which I'll get into. Great cast. The Mark Lester directed it, the guy that directed Commando. Um, the movie's only 79 minutes, and that's because um, they actually went in and they edited the movie severely. Um, it says here that um, they brought a, Warner Brothers did not like the movie. They did, They hated it because basically what they wanted to do was... They wanted to cash in on the martial arts genre again. You know, Steven Seagal was their, like, their martial arts guy, but they wanted more, you know. So they got Dolph Lundgren and Brandon Lee to come in. You know, they hated the first cut of the movie, so they brought another editor in. And they, uh, they cut out. There were supposed to be scenes, and I've seen pictures of them. There are scenes that were cut out where Dolph Lundgren has a different partner, and he's a Japanese guy. And I don't know if he gets killed or, like, whatever the deal is. Um, but I've seen pictures online of scenes from that scene. So they obviously shot him. And then, like, there were supposed to be more scenes with the police captain. It says right here. More dramatic scenes with Lundgren and Lee. Um, there was supposed to be a scene where Br or Dolph Lundgren's getting yelled at by his boss after the beginning of the movie. Um, I heard that after the um, the bathhouse sequence, there was supposed to be a car chase, and then they like they drive into a mall and they like have a shootout in the mall. Which I don't know if that was filmed. Now my computer's making fucking noises. Jesus, um, I don't know if that scene was filmed or not. But that would have been cool to see. But yeah, Warner Brothers hated the movie, you know, and they only released it to 140 screens. In the United States, which was probably like L.A. and New York City, and the movie only made like two million dollars. So they they just hated the movie. They dumped on the movie. Um, you know, they they went in and cut everything out. You know, all the all the you know expansive plot stuff. You know, they cut all that out, and they just basically dumped it on video. And now the movie's actually been very successful on VHS and and now DVD. Um, which is great, you know. The movie definitely has a cult following because of, you know, Brandon Lee is a, is a very big contributing factor, and Dolph Lundgren as well. And plus, you know, look at 
like I said, look, Harry Tagawa's in it. Toshihiro Obata from Ninja Turtles is in it, you know. Um, there's just great, you know, you have a great cast, you know, you have great locations. I love, you know, the cinematography is great. You know, you have great fight sequences, great shootouts, you know, great action sequences. And that's what action films is. You have a simple plot. You know, I don't know of any classic action film that has an elaborate plot. You know. But it's the execution. And that's why these films are so great. And I know that nowadays the action film genre is kind of dead. You know, and nobody really wants, you know, apparently nobody wants to see action films anymore. Which I think that's bullshit, you know. But, you know, nowadays you got Born Identity with all its shaky cam and you got all these superhero movies. You know, that's what's considered action nowadays, superhero movies. They're, I don't consider them action. They're fantasy. Well, except Batman. Batman's pretty straightforward. But, yeah, I mean, you know, you got superhero movies and remakes, you know, all, and that's what's considered the action genre. You know, whatever happened to movies like this, fun movies like this. If I was alive in 1991, I would have went and saw this in a theater, you know. But, you know, whatever, you know, whatever happened to these classic films, you know, these classic action films. This is definitely a classic action film, you know. I mean, I don't know. You know, apparently nobody wants to see action films anymore, you know. That's, and that's the reason why The Last Stand is not doing good at the box office right now. Because apparently no one wants to see them. But whatever, you know, that's a, that I have an upcoming video, my, I'm going to do my thoughts on the action genre, um, so you can look forward to, to hearing all about that, you know, more in depth on that. But anyway, back to Shinon Little Tokyo. But I mean, I, it's really hard to review this because, you know, well not, not really, I mean, but I just want to talk about how awesome this movie is, you know. It's just a great movie, you know, and you, you can sit here and, and argue all day that it sucks and there's, you know, no depth to it and it's just a, you know, a loud popcorn flick. Yeah, it is, you know, it is a popcorn movie. It's, you know, something that you go and you get popcorn and you watch the movie. <laughs> you know, that's what a popcorn movie is to me, you know. So, I mean, yeah, I'll sit down and have a soda. You know, I got a Mountain Dew right here, and I'll eat some popcorn and watch this movie. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, in terms of the cast, you know, Dolph Lundgren is, you know, a martial artist. And that's the, that's what bugs me. He didn't do more movies like this. He didn't do more martial arts movies. Because I don't think a lot of people know that he's a martial artist. I mean, I do, you know, obviously, growing up sort of with movies like this. I mean, I didn't see this till I was in high school, but I've watched other Dolph Lundgren movies growing up. But... I don't think a lot of people know he's a martial artist. And I know he did some, like an I Come In Peace. You know, he does that kick at the end of the movie. Um, you know, Army of One or the Joshua Tree, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I call it Army of One. Um, he does a little bit of martial arts in that. Uh, Universal Soldier, he does some, you know. But he, he wrote, this is the closest thing he's done to a martial arts film. You know, um... Which is great, you know. Like I said, he's a third degree black belt in Kyokushin Kai, which is also what Michael Jai White studies, which is a full contact um, martial art. You know, um, yeah. It says it on Wikipedia. Every martial arts full contact. Come on, we do full contact in my class. You know, we got we don't hit to the head and stuff like that when we spar because we got kids in, in the class. But anyway, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, he's a third degree black belt. He's he's obviously got the figure to do martial arts. I mean, he's very muscular. He's in shape, you know. And and I love the. Well, I'll get into the scenes later, but, um, you know, he's definitely capable of doing martial arts. And that's the thing about these classic films, you know, these classic action mar and martial arts films. You can actually see what the hell they're doing. Nowadays, you got the camera going all kinds of places. You got shaky cam, and you can't see what's going on. When Dolph Lundgren kicks people, you can see it. When he punches someone, you can see it. When he has the sword fight at the end, you can see everything. You know, you got wide and medium wide shots where you can actually see what the hell's going on. You know, you don't have all this shaky cam and 
you know, all this shit where people are flying around and you don't know what's going on. You can actually see what the hell is going on. Same with Brandon Lee. When Brandon Lee's fighting, you can see everything. You know, you're not going to get that with action films today. You know, you're going to get shaky cam and and CGI and 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 bullshit. Um, you know, that's all you're going to get. You're not going to get classic fight choreography. But you know, he's definitely capable of the martial arts. And he's definitely capable of the shootouts. You know, he carries a Desert Eagle. <sighs> One sec. Once again, you saw another cut because people keep calling my fucking house. <laughs> Um, where was I? Um, Dolph Lundgren talking about shooting people. Yeah, he carries a Desert Eagle. I mean, obviously the perfect weapon for a man of his stature. I mean, Dolph Lundgren's like what? Like 6'3", 6'4", and he's like 275 pounds. I mean, I wouldn't fuck with the guy, you know? And I, I think that's why a lot of people don't know that he studies martial arts because you wouldn't think that a guy like him would, but he has. I mean, he studied... He also studied judo. I know he started in judo, um, and he he's like a European champion. I mean, he uh, he uh, he fought. I know he was a, he fought professionally um, before he was an actor, but he's like a European champion, and um, he led like the national karate team in Sweden. I think you know, so he's definitely capable of the martial arts, which is great, and he does a good performance. I mean, he's. This guy who grew up in Japan, you know, he speaks a little bit of Japanese, which is great. I mean, now that that's cool, you know, um, keeping it kind of in in theme with the movie, you know, which is awesome. You know, I thought that was really cool that he spoke Japanese. You know, he he's he's you know a war. He's a true warrior. You know, he's a true master because you know he's got a sensitive side and he you know believes in the spirituality and stuff like that, which. To me, that's what a true martial artist does and a true, you know, warrior and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. You know, he did a great job. He had a great performance in the film. Um, you know, he did great. You know, it's definitely one of my favorite Dolph Lundgren movies. It's probably in the top three. Um, and, yeah, it's it's third. I mean, it, or, eh, it's third. Um, you know, and... He just does a great job, you know, and I love all his, you know, he, he does, he's got some one-liners in the movie, you know, like boned up the ass with a red hot poker and, um, you know, I like that girl and I like that car and I like to cut off certain parts of Yoshida's anatomy and Brandon Lee is like, you're developing a fixation, you know, um, that's that line, you know, the line, everybody remembers the line in the movie that Brandon Lee says, you know, you have the biggest dick I've seen on a man. Which, originally it was supposed to be on a white man, but they cut it out, you know. But I think it works better, you know, the way they say it in the movie. You know, he's like, thanks. He's like, you could have, and Brandon Lee's like, you could have said, don't get killed, you know. And, and then he's like, alright, don't get killed, you know. Uh, but Brandon Lee, you know, uh, hold on, but, you know, Dolph Lundgren did a great job, you know. And he talks about this movie quite a bit. And um, I don't know, like, I remember... <laughs> watching an interview with him recently and this guy was naming off like some of his movies and he's like you know you did a bunch of great movies in the 80s and the 90s you know and he's like yeah not a lot of people saw those movies and then he, he talked about the punisher and i remember reading an interview with him a couple of years ago and he said he didn't like the punisher i guess just the way that the movie turned out you know it didn't get released in theaters and and all that i just i guess he was kind of disappointed with the way it turned out but, you know, the guy was like, you know, that's a fucking awesome movie. He said that in the interview, and, and he's like, yeah, it was a good one. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, Dolph Lundgren likes The Punisher, which is great. Um, but he always talks about Brandon Lee, and he always says the same thing. You know, he's very nice, and he was the total package. You know, he could do the martial arts. He could act. You know, he was a pretty boy. You know, he definitely, you know, attracted to the female audience as well. And he said it was very sad because he was going to be a huge star. And, and, and I always believed that Brandon Lee was going to be a huge star. Um, but now on to Brandon Lee. Um, you know, this really, to me, is Brandon Lee's movie. Um, you know, he's got the best lines. You know, come on, you have the biggest dick I've seen on a man, you know. It's just like one of those video games. You defeated the first wave, and then Dolph Lundgren's like, you know you have moments when you're truly an asshole. You know, you're supposed to base dust between cooking cycles, you know, um, what, what else, um, you know, 
I don't eat raw fish. And then they go into the restaurant and he's like, you know that stuff I said about raw fish? I can change my mind. I like, and then he sees Tia Carrere, you know, oh, I like to get immersed in some of that. You know, uh, my dad's a white dude from the valley. I know about malls, taking his car out on the weekends. Well, what is, what's, why do you study martial arts? Mom thought it would be good because I'm half Japanese. Did you have to do that weird flower arranging thing? You know, um, you've obviously been pissing these guys off for a long time, you know. Um, no, you, they've obviously pissed you off for a long time. I'm sorry, I screwed it up. Um, you know, I like when he he's fights those guys and like when they're going into the bonsai club. And Dolph Lundgren's like, what age did you start studying? Four. Well, you need work. He's like, you need work on your form. He's like, I was four. You know, there's nothing wrong with my form. Which Brandon Lee actually did start studying the martial arts at four years old. So there you go. Um, you know, maybe we should have paid the cover charge. And you know, he's fighting those guys. He's like, stay down, motherfucker. Which I love that line. He just like punches the guy and. Um, cop, policeman, it's bad to shoot me, he's a cop too, it's bad to shoot him, shit, you don't like this guy, fine, I understand you don't like this guy, but if you kill him right now, you know, you wreck everything that you stand for, all your samurai bullshit, you're a scumbag if you shoot this guy, you said be polite, that was not polite, and then they pull the car over, he's like, you samurai asshole, he's like, you know, despite myself, I like you. You know, so can we kill the... It's like, if you want to kill this guy, that's fine. But let's do it right. Let's do it clean. Like a cop in the 20th century. And when we're finished, we're going to go eat sushi off those naked chicks. You know, I'm like, yes. Great lines like that. You know, you don't get great one-liners like that anymore. You know, we possibly discussed arresting these people. I'm not going to shoot first. Um, what's the other one? Uh, you know, he's like, I think it's kind of weird that I'm... You know, working at Little Tokyo. It's kind of reverse racism if you think about it. I always thought I'd be working Malibu. That'll never happen. Great, I've joined you on this personal quest for vengeance and you're crushing my dreams. Malibu Sheriff's Department, not LAPD. Really? Damn. You know, um, what else? You know, there's got to be nine guys in that house. <laughs> you know, and then um, the bathhouse is great. You know, I always wanted a Porsche. Um... You know, then, um, I saw you stripped out for that hot tub. I'd be scared, too. <laughs> um, where's Monaco? She's in my room. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, we got more, we got a problem, buddy. We got more bad guys. There's more bad guys than we have bullets, you know. And he's like, what's a futon, you know? I'm like, oh, great stuff, you know. And they're getting tortured. And he's like, get me the fuck off of here. And then they're in, like, you know, they're getting... Heavy metal, so shit, you know, they're getting ready to get killed, you know, use that muscle man stuff, Kenner, with your fucking legs, push, you know, and then, love it at the end when he's fighting Toshihiro Obata, and you have the right to remain silent, you know, you have the right to an attorney, you have the right to be dead, and then the final line, alright, we killed the suspects, destroyed all the evidence, you know, what are we going to put this in the police report, you know, so Brandon Lee, it, to me, it's always been his movie. You know, even when I first saw it, you know, it's got the best lines. And I just did the whole movie for you. Uh, you know, he's, you know, he's obviously a martial artist. I mean, come on now. You know, he's got great fight sequences. I know he shoots some people, but, you know, he's really just kicking ass, you know, and, and just having a ball, you know. And, he, and you can tell he, they had fun on this movie, you know. They had to have fun on this movie. But kicking ass, you know, not taking any names. You know, he's this badass, you know, white boy. You know, I guess you call him a white boy, you know. Um, half Japanese cop, you know. Stay down, motherfucker. That's still my favorite line, you know. Um, just fucking, you know, he's just fucking awesome in this movie. You know, that's all I got to say, you know. He's fucking awesome. And I love on the poster. I'm trying to get a poster of this movie. But I love how, you know, he's like this, you know. It's awesome. Fucking awesome. Um, Kerry Tagawa, you know, a great villain, you know. He's a great villain in, like, every movie he's been in. This, Mortal Kombat, um, Bridge of Dragons with Dolph Lundgren, uh, again. Soldier Boys uh, with Michael Dudikoff, you know, he was in The Phantom at the end of the movie. He was great in that. Um, Johnny Tsunami, I know he doesn't play a bad guy, but he was great in that. It's always nice to see him play a good guy. 
and he's like the nicest guy in real life. Every interview I've seen with him, he's really nice, you know, he's got a very pleasant way about him, and that's great, and that's why, like I, you know, I talk about this all the time in other reviews and stuff, that's why these villains, these guys that play villains all the time, are great actors, because they're the nicest people in real life, but they can just turn it on and be a bad guy, you know, which is great, you know, and that's true acting to me. Toshihiro Obata is great, you know, he's like the, the henchman, and I know at the time, I'm not sure now, but I know at the time he didn't speak English that well, because he came from Japan. In Ninja Turtles, it's not his voice, they dubbed his voice, but in this movie he actually gets to use his own voice, and I don't think he knew very much English at the time, and I'm not sure if he does now, I'm not, I'm not sure if he, he lives here or not, I think... I'm not sure, you know, I'm not 100% sure, because he, he only did a, a couple of movies, and it was only a couple of years, so he was like the go-to guy for a couple of years, but he's a great martial artist, like I said, I think he's got like 10 different black belts, um, like I said, his, his one of his ancestors is like a, was a samurai general, you know, and I mean, definitely qualified, you know, awesome job, he did a great job, you know, um, you know, Tia Carrere did a great job, and uh, for her, it's not her for her nude scenes. They got someone else because she didn't feel comfortable with it. But then she went and did Playboy, which I never understood that. But you know, just she, everyone did great in this movie. You know, just you have a great cast. You know, great. The director did a great job. Mark Lester, great cinematography. Um, you know, uh, great score from David Michael Frank, which I'll play one of the pieces in a second here once I open up iTunes but David Michael Frank you know another great score he did you know best of the best two um, he did Code of Silence with Chuck Norris um, he did a bunch of the early Steven Seagal films you know he's just a great composer and what's really cool about him is like all his music sounds similar and the one piece that I'm gonna play right now is called Noble Quest and um, it's when Dolph Lundgren's training, you know, that sequence. And I love the main main title as well. Here it goes. If it plays. So yeah, there you go. You know, that's my favorite piece of the score. I have the soundtrack on my iPod. But yeah, David Michael Frank, you know, a great composer. Like I said, a lot of his music sounds very, very similar, which is great. I really like when composers do that. And I also like when composers do different things. They go in different directions. But yeah, I mean, a great score, um, you know, from David Michael Frank, you know. And the movie is chock full of great scenes. I love the credit sequence where they're showing the guy with all the tattoos and they're doing that light thing with the, the titles and stuff, you know. Great introdu introduction to Dolph Lundgren, you know. He breaks up a kickboxing match and then a shootout ensues and he's jumping over cars and stuff and, you know, he's having breakfast and they come in, you know, you got the problem, paka, you know, and, you know, he fights those guys, you know. You know, if I don't get my breakfast, I get very cranky. You know, and Dolph or Brandon Lee comes in and they fight each other. You know, he does that awesome backflip kick. You know, and then they get shot at. You know, oh well, you're my partner. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. And then they go, uh, like I said, into the bonsai club, and you know they're you know fighting everybody. Great fight sequence. Oh my god, I love that fight sequence. You know, once again, stay down, motherfucker. You know, and Dolph Lundgren like is. Punches through the uh, the drink holder and, you know, they're, you know, Brandon Lee's jumping around and everything, doing kicks and, you know, just great 
fucking fight sequences. You know, then Dolph Lundgren goes into the house, and, you know, I had to kill nine of them, and, you know, kills all those guys, and then they have the bathhouse sequence, you know, where uh, Dolph Lundgren kills that fat guy, he stabs him, and, you know, all the blood's coming out, and Brandon Lee, um, I think it's a mistake, but Brandon Lee does, like, this sweep, and the way he gets back up, it looks awkward. I think that it might have been a movie mistake, because it just looks kind of awkward. I always felt that way about that, but... You know, great bathhouse sequence, you know, they're fighting all those guys and getting sprayed with the hose. And then you have, you know, the house is getting shot up and, you know, Dolph Lundgren's, you know, got all those weapons. And he's, you know, you know, just throwing knives and shit. And Brandon Lee's just like, you know, it's like one of those video games. You just defeated the first wave. I just think that was like a great line. Um, then they get tortured and then they break out and, you know, that's, I like that, you know, when they're getting out of the car, I like that scene. Where did everybody go? I don't know. Let's go find them. <laughs> then, you know, yeah, you know, Dolph Lundgren, you know, training and, you know, punching the bag and cutting this, you know, bamboo and stuff. And I wish that they would have shown something with Brandon Lee. I think it would have, it would have been cool. I know, you know, it's Dolph Lundgren's really the star, but you know, well, supposed to be, but Brandon Lee really is in my opinion. But, you know, it would have been cool to see Brandon, you know, work out. You know, that would have been cool. That's probably my only thing that I wish was in the movie. You know, then you got the finale where they go to the brewery and Dolph Lundgren's got that awesome outfit on. And they're, you know, they're driving through walls and shooting guys. You know, it's impossible. We killed you. Hell sucked. You know, or we sent you to hell. It sucked. We came back. Kill them. Send them back to hell. And, they're running around shooting people, and Brandon Lee fights Toshihiro Obata. You know, you have the right to be dead. You know, great fight sequence there, you know. And him and Kerry, you know, Dolph Lundgren and Terry, 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 that, Terry Tagawa have that sword fight, you know, and just great stuff. I like the way he gets killed, too. He just gets thrown on that board, and the fireworks are going off. Just great stuff. They don't make them like they used to, which sucks, but anyway. But anyway, wrapping this up, I know this video went on for far too long and had stupid, had to cut, you know, because people were calling and texting and all kinds of shit and whatever. Um, but anyway, you know, Shutdown Little Tokyo is definitely Brandon Lee's film, you know, in my opinion. A kick-ass 90s martial arts buddy cop action classic. If you have not seen it, just go out and buy it. Um, I think the DVD is out of print now, which sucks. But go out and buy the movie. I mean, you will love it. You know, it, it's it's a classic. I cannot say any more. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this review of Showdown Little Tokyo. And stay tuned because next I'm going to do my favorite Brandon Lee movie, Rapid Fire. So I hope you guys liked it and take care.